everyone and welcome back to Hair and Now. I would like to welcome you also to my hair room, my art studio, and today I have just some of the best news ever. Uh, this is not going to be nearly as exciting to any of you as it is to me, but I finally have a very nice Victorian-inspired braiding table for making Victorian hair jewelry. I am so ecstatic and in a moment here I'm going to tell you a little bit about the differences between this my new lovely table and the Kumi Himo table because we have spoken quite a bit about Kumi Himo tables on this channel in relation to the similarities and differences in Victorian style hair jewelry. But before we go too far, I also want to give you all just a monumental thank you because we just reached 1,000 subscribers on this channel and it is all thanks to you, you, my lovely viewers, and I really, really appreciate you. So please be on the lookout because soon in honor of hitting 1,000 subscribers, I might be doing some kind of some kind of fun giveaway promotion of sorts, so please be on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, you can follow me at my various social media handles um, so you can see those updates. Now, moving right along to these two braiding tables, we're going to talk a little bit about the similarities, differences, cultures they come from, and their different uses. Uh, they more or less serve the same purpose. They are both characterized by having a small round table with a pole in the center, and we're going to use this for crafting and braiding. Now, I for one am a specialist in Victorian hair work, including Victorian hair jewelry, so the reason why I have been wanting a Victorian-inspired hair braiding table is to make long braided hair jewelry like this. Things like this are actually made out of human hair and this was a very, very common practice in the Victorian era. For the last six or so years, I have been using a Kumi Himo table. Kumi Himo is the art of Japanese cord braiding and it is still a popular craft today. So you can Google Kumi Himo tables and you can find a lot of different options. So this is what I have been using and it does work. There is nothing wrong with using a Kumi Himo table, but here are the reasons why I'm so excited to have my new table. If you see this Kumi Himo table, both of them are on the ground right next to me. First of all, the Kumi Himo table is a little bit shorter. They do sometimes come in varying heights, but I do prefer that this table is, you know, just a little bit taller when I'm sitting here in my hair, hair braiding chair. Um, it's, it's the perfect height for me to be able to move and work the hair around the table while still sitting up straight and maintaining a good posture. I have often found myself kind of start to lean over a bit um, and maybe developing some poor, uh, some poor <laughs> postural habits while working on the Kumi Himo table. Another great component about this is that it is collapsible and easier to travel with. This Kumi Himo table you see has the top table that is removable and these four long wooden legs and the base at the bottom. These legs do not collapse, so that's a pretty long, uh, that's a pretty long leg if you're trying to pack that up in a suitcase to travel with. In my case, this would be if I'm teaching a workshop or if I'm giving a presentation on how these Victorian techniques were done. Whereas this braiding table has three legs and if you see this knob right here, these are completely collapsible, so much shorter once you collapse those. And here is by far my favorite feature of this table. It sits on another little round piece and there's sort of an indent in the wood here that fits directly over top of it. So it's not actually clicking into the wood and staying firm and stiff like the Kumi Himo table is. This one actually revolves. 
and many patterns for hair jewelry, especially when you get into lots and lots of different strands, it's really helpful to be able to just turn it toward you so you can work around, do your braiding pattern, turn, continue to braid, and turn. Very, very nice. I absolutely love that. Uh, personally, when I have my kumihimo table, I have literally turned the entire table. Um, and again, it gets the job done, but this is just a little more convenient. Now, this braiding table is modeled off of the traditional Swedish type, which in Swedish would be referred to as Shedjestelning. And if you've seen my video on Swedish hair work, you know I have referenced the village Vomhus a lot for A, one of my favorite places in the world, and B, just a really, really great historical community of hair workers. So traditionally, the Swedish hair workers did actually travel for their craft. They would travel uh, far and wide within Sweden and internationally to many different countries. So having something that they could collapse to put in a traveling basket was very, very ideal for them. And since I am a professional hair worker and I'm making a lot of different types of jewelry, I really like that. I was able to get uh, two different sizes. So if I'm using maybe a smaller pattern that doesn't use as many pieces of hair, I can pick the one with the smaller surface. Or if I have lots and lots of strands, I got that covered too. Now, I was able to purchase this from a lovely, lovely woman named Karen Keenan. She runs a shop called Hemsloyd Studios. And she is actually an ancestor of some of these prominent Swedish hair workers. And I am just absolutely so thrilled that she was able to get these tables for me. It's actually her husband who is a magnificent woodworker who was able to work with her to get these done. So I'm absolutely ecstatic. I'm going to put her information in the description of this video if you want to check her out. If you are interested in learning more about Kumi Himo, I recommend watching my video on Kubo and the Two Strings, Death, Grief, and Hair. And if you want to learn more about Victorian style hair jewelry, I recommend watching my video Victorian Hair Work Techniques, Table Work. And I want to give a huge, huge thank you to all of these magnificent supporters on Patreon. By supporting me on Patreon and joining our community, you not only help me to keep this channel going and keep this channel growing, but you can also get access to tons and tons of bonus material over there. This can include bonus vlogs. I actually opened this table uh, live on camera, so if you want to see my very first reactions, uh, where it was maybe the most exciting package I've ever received in my life, you can head on over there and access that video. And if you fancy learning how to make Victorian hair jewelry yourself, I also have dozens of video tutorials on how to do that. And especially now that I have a wonderful new braiding table, I'm going to be doing even more videos on the table work hair jewelry techniques coming very soon. In the meantime, please sure to give this video a like, drop me a comment, and make sure to join over 1,000 happy hair and history lovers by subscribing. And until next time, bye!